let's get to something that's really ridiculous. It's time for us. This is this. I've had this one in my back pocket for a very long time. This is a fascinating story, and it's time for hipster history. You probably haven't heard of it. Okay, this is a long one, but a fascinating one because I was doing it as research for God's mistakes. Now, the American West is a land of things. Wind power. That's two unnecessary interjections in 15 minutes. The well, Ameri- to get on a boat. <laughs> are you unwell? Yes. You are unwell. Yes! Hooray! <laughs> the American West is a land of booms and busts. But there's never been as b- a bust as biblical as the great Rocky Mountain locust swarms of the 1870s. Now, back then, the insects descended by the trillions on the Great Plains, and they spread over a vast portion of land from Montana across to Minnesota and down to Texas. They devoured not only crops, but any organic material, sawdust, leather, and even the clothes on people's backs. These are photographs. This looks like something from a 1950s horror movie. They swarmed in numbers unseen in history and brought economic ruin to communities and even extreme cases death. Starting in June 1874, skies all over the prairie went dark. It was like a snowstorm or like nighttime. The insects, which are the size of your pinky finger, ate wheat, corn, melons, tobacco, barley, strawberries, potatoes, beans, and fruit trees. The weight of all the bugs in the swarm was estimated to be in excess of 27 million tons. There are some things they didn't like. Peas. I guess penis is not a quality that they enjoy. But in most cases, a visit from a swarm meant utter loss. One historian in St. Louis, Missouri said, one farmer south of the city had 15 acres of corn eaten by them in three hours. They mowed it down close to the ground just as if a mowing machine had cut it. They looked like a great white glistening cloud. Their wings caught the sunshine on them and made them look like a cloud of water vapor. Farmers rushed to cover their wells and scrambled to save what crops they could. Uh, They covered their gardens with blankets and textiles, but the insects were too great. They simply chewed through the fabric. In many cases, word was able to spread fast in the swarms, but fair warning did not much level the playing field. One strategy meant was trying to keep a barrier of fires around the land. The more smoke produced, the better. But the locusts uh, would land on the burning pits in numbers significant enough to snuff them out. Grasshoppers were putting out a fire. Do we have pictures of the actual bugs? Yeah. In uh, uh, Laura Ingalls Wilder wrote Little House on the Prairie. In one of her books, she talked about what it was like uh, living through it. She goes, you could hear the millions of jaws biting and chewing. And she described how family members came back inside after a brief excursion and grasshoppers went into the house with them. Their clothes were full of grasshoppers. Some jumped into the stove. Ma covered the food till they chased and smashed every grasshopper. She swept them up and shoved them into the stove. Their reach knew no bounds. They infiltrated every nook. People had to pat down their bedding before... That's not them. That's not them. That's them. Okay. They beat against the houses, swarmed in at the windows, and they covered passing trains. This is according to the then-failing New York Times. They work as if sent to destroy. They huddled on train tracks for rest and for warmth, being sluggish in the cool morning air, and were trampled by the horde under the wheels of passing trained. They get trains. They gather so numerously that the oil from their crushed bodies reduced the traction so as to actually stop the train. Farmers and families leapt to action, wielding all sorts of tactical fires. Uh, there are other acts of desperation, shotgun glass, stomping, blows with a stick. Clever devices came into use, such as the hopper dozer, which was a horse-drawn tool that trawled fields using a steel plate covered in sticky coal tar to scoop and trap locusts from the ground. Look at that. An entomologist went full Jonathan Swift in his 1877 book about the plague. He celebrated the locusts when boiled and afterwards stewed with a few vegetables and a little butter pepper, salt, and vinegar made an excellent fricassee. The problem remained, too many locusts, 
to make extermination a real strategy. Families needed money and food to survive. Communities need to plan ahead for the coming harvest. In 1877, Congress established the U.S. Entomological Commission for the purpose of confronting this pest. Two years earlier, it had allocated $30,000 to supply seed to devastated areas. Um, the national response to the charity and generosity provoked by the Great Chicago Fire just years before had spared communities and states sent food and financial aid, <laughs> financial aid to those affiliated. In Missouri, the government required able-bodied men to dedicate one or two days a week to plowing and killing locust eggs and larvae in Minnesota. Nicolette County paid its citizens $25,000 for delivering 25,000 bushels of slaughtered locusts. On the individual level, citizens earned extra income, and many took to selling buffalo bones and horns at, at railroad hubs, which they could sell at market for as much as $8 a ton. Not everyone survived. As one contemporary report says, we have seen within the past week families which had not had a meal of vict victuals in their home, families that had nothing to eat save what their neighbors gave them and what game could be caught in a trap since last fall. In one case, a family of six died within six days of each other from lack of food to keep body and soul together. From present indication, the future four months will ma make many graves marked with a simple piece of wood with the inscription, starve to death, painted on it. No other year proved as severe as 1874-75, though the Lock, Ro Rocky Mountain locusts continued campaigns of crop destruction throughout the 1870s and thereafter. And then, they went extinct. And no one knows why. This was an insect whose swarms were so great, they once covered an area equal to the landmass of California, which is the second biggest state is it the third biggest? Is Texas bigger than California? They have more electoral votes. It's, yeah, I think Texas is bigger. Yeah, third biggest state. It's fucking big. Decades of hypotheses have produced a few answers. Some suggested that their existence was tied to the western buffalo, or maybe somewhere along the line they were punished for their narrowness and, narrowness and genetic diversity. But a scientist named Jeffrey Lockwood had a recent proposal. He thought that their migratory patterns be behaved like the monarch butterfly, so that they would travel over and cover big areas of land and retreat back to sanctuary pockets to recuperate. His research suggests that locusts populated the valleys in Montana and Wyoming for this purpose, and when westward expansion continued, the areas were deforested, irrigated, plowed, and replanted, turning those habitats and breeding grounds into farmland. If this leading theory is correct, it means that the extermination of the Rocky Mountain locust, which is, might be the first time a widespread agricultural pest has ever been annihilated, came for all of our best efforts by accident. Believe it or not.